You're listening to the Scotiabank Market Points Podcast. I'm your host, Greg White. Market Points is part of the Knowledge Capital series, a collection of audio, video, and written commentary from Scotiabank Global Banking and Markets leaders designed to provide you with timely insights and analysis. The COVID-19 pandemic rages on. As we enter a second wave, we must learn from our experiences these past few months and do what we humans do best adapt. Armed with new knowledge, businesses have been meeting the challenge head-on and reopening their offices in ways that best serve the needs of their employees and their customers. Scotiabank started its learning curve early. As a global bank, it benefited from on-the-ground experience in Asia and quickly maneuvered to evolve its practices as the virus moved around the world. On this episode of Market Points, we share key highlights from a recent webcast titled Workplace Reentry. Lessons Learned, a Scotiabank Perspective, where Scotiabank leaders shared their ongoing experiences through our collective journey overcoming a once-in-a-century challenge. Mike Merkley, Managing Director, Business Insights Financial Management at Scotiabank, is leading Scotiabank Global Banking and Markets return efforts and spoke about the unique challenges in an otherwise close-quartered sales and trading environment. And really, it was an exercise around Number one was prioritization. What what did we need in terms of staffing and support in the office in order to continue supporting our customers? And then what could we support from a remote perspective that still gave the business the, the flexibility and the continuity it needed, again, to, to maintain that, that support for our customers? And so some of the things were around, you know, socially distanced floor plans where We worked with our real estate team to say, realistically, if we're maintaining that minimum six-foot distancing in in Toronto, for example, what does the new floor plan look like? And thinking through things like, well, so what does traffic flow look like? How are people getting to and from washrooms? All of those considerations that we never really sort of looked at before became absolutely paramount before we had people coming back into the workspace. How to design re-entry is only part of the equation. A big variable that all businesses need to solve is the who. Loretta Marcosia, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Global Banking and Markets, outlined how Scotiabank addresses this critical question. We, we have a bank criteria that each of the businesses are following, and that really is about business criticality and keeping the business going. So critical staff that cannot do their jobs at home or can't do their jobs effectively at home or the ones that we have in the office. Um, so there, there was a criteria. Uh, it was business specific. So every business determined what and how to apply that criteria to their business. And the balance is always keeping our employees safe and keeping business moving forward. Um, and so that, that is the, the balance that, uh, that we take, that uh, informs the criteria. Um, if it gets very unsafe to be outside, then we go to as few people as we possibly need in the office. Um, if, if it gets safer outside, then we bring a few people back. And the criteria of who we bring back is all, also informed by, you know, improving efficiency or improving productivity. So it's not a, you know, lottery or whoever wants to. It really has to center around uh, productivity and uh and um, criticality because it's still not safe, right? There is no vaccine. It, there is, community spread is still out there. Um, so, you know, the safest place for people to be is having the least amount of contact with others. Um, so that that is the, the number one criteria is keeping our employees safe, but balancing the business need uh, along with it. Businesses need to consider both physical health and the mental well-being of their employees. Julia Cowan, Director of Human Resources, Business Partner for Global Banking and Markets, outlined how Scotiabank supports employee mental health. For sure, the bank took a a very uh, aggressive approach in terms of providing support. We have already established a, a, a family and assistance plan that would provide a whole bunch of therapy support as well as tools and resources for elder care, child care, we also have emergency child care, so when the daycare did open again, there was some availability and support for families looking for emergency coverage. Uh, the bank also provided an online um, 
uh, consultation with doctors. So you could call and, and speak about concerns that you had. For instance, if you had a child that was sick, they would help you walk through the uh, symptoms that you were seeing. And then the same thing with Beacon, which is a, another online therapy support tool, but designed around resiliency and, and um, looking to support you during this time of change and dealing in particular with the circumstances we're facing now. Uh, then, of course, vacation days and personal days to allow people flexibility to look after their families as they need to. And then in regular um, meetings, encouraging folks, take the time to recharge. None of us can go anywhere. There's no vacation spots to travel to, but don't underestimate the power of rest and being able to unplug. And then that links uh, right directly into mental health. And, and as we continue to go along, we started to see more and more challenges around uh, how people were managing at home, some with isolation, sometimes with unsafe home environment, um, and then others just being away from the office and the routine was, it's hard to manage things at home, childcare and such as well. So um, all sorts of resources the bank provided as support, uh, many different learning sessions and, and things on LinkedIn, for instance, that allow you to access uh, sessions on on uh, meditating and on um, resiliency. So very easy for people to pick and choose the type of support they need and when they need it. So they can have it in the middle of the night if they can't sleep. So all, all sorts of very creative things to, to help care for our people. Each business's own reentry plan will ultimately be customized, but we all seem to agree that working from home in one form or another is here to stay. Jennifer Frook, Vice President, Enterprise Crisis Management, spoke about how Scotiabank is embracing flexibility. A year ago, maybe um, a number of different teams for a variety of different reasons, whether it was technology or culture or some other reason, you know, it was hard to envision um, a time where you could have um, upwards of 80% of your workforce, you know, working remotely or working from home. And here we are just a year later and, um, and we're doing it and we're doing it well. And so I think when we look to the future and appreciating that um, this is going to go on for probably quite some time as we deal with cold and flu season, as we look um, towards a period of time before perhaps vaccines and treatments are available, that we really are embracing the flexibility option and understanding that there are different ways to do business, you know, exploring what works for our employees and most importantly, our customers, and really embracing that and putting it into place. Um, you know, I can remember when you had to quickly in GBM move, you know, quite a significant number of people home. We enabled them with the technology and the tools to do that. And so now that they have it and we've invested in that, what does that look like in the future and what and how can we better offer um, balance and different things to our teams going forward? I know in our workplaces, um, we really are embracing that idea of the flexibility and how can we make our workplaces, um, you know, work for our employees. Maybe it's not in the short term back to the workplace for, you know, the traditional five days a week, but there are some very purposeful activity-based things that are better accomplished in a workplace. And so how can we make that work for our employees? And so I think those are kind of the themes that how do we make our current workplaces work? And then how do we take all the positives that have come out of under understanding how we can work remotely and really weave that into the, the long-term plan for our employees. With respect to long-term lessons, there have been several. But for Global Banking and Markets COO Loretta Marcosia, it's our shared resiliency in a crisis that will leave a lasting impression. Just the resiliency, uh, personal resiliency, the business resiliency, you know, the, the community resiliency and, and people working together. Uh, definitely, you know, we, I think we, again, we over-engineered um, our resumption plans uh, for resiliency and it, mm -hmm. assuming that the people weren't resilient. And I think we've proven that um, people and, and business can be very resilient, uh, depending on the circumstances, invoking every single business continuity plan all at once. Yeah, you know, that that's resiliency. You've been listening to key highlights from the webcast Workplace Reentry, Lessons Learned, a Scotiabank Perspective. Brought to you by the Scotiabank Women Initiative for Global Banking and Markets. More information about the initiative and upcoming webcasts can be found on our website, gbm.scotiabank.com. You can now find Scotiabank's Market Points on Apple Podcasts. 
Don't miss an opportunity to hear from industry thought leaders. Click subscribe. And if you've been enjoying Market Points, please be sure to rate and review us. You can also find more thought-leading content from Scotiabank on our website at gbm.scotiabank.com. And you can also follow us on Twitter at ScotiabankGBM, as well as our LinkedIn showcase page under Scotiabank Global Banking and Markets. Please refer to our legal disclosures on our website. I'm Greg White, and thanks for listening.